Hello everybody and welcome back to Stellaris and welcome to Economics 101 for the game. So today we're going to be checking out a little bit more detail about the economics around Stellaris and what we can do to help ourselves win the game. Now as mentioned throughout this guide there are many ways to win in Stellaris. One of them is by using your resources to your advantage, things like influence and stuff like that to gain the upper hand within the game. Now there are very, thing, very many things to consider when using influence to win the day is that don't forget you still have an effect on your empire sprawl and the negative effects that it has within your empire. So the faster you expand the more likely you are to have negative effects. Sometimes the negative effects can be negated by using higher resource production to offset the cost that it causes in the long run. Now, resources are split into three main groups. The material resources, which we've gone through, such as your energy credits, your minerals, such and so forth. Your abstract resources, which are your influence, and your unity, and your research points. They are all classed as resources. And this is the one we're gonna be concentrating mainly on today. Now the third one is strategic resources which again we will attempt to cover today if not in another episode because they are also very important to have later down the line. They give you a lot of bonuses and benefits like we discussed in one of the earlier episodes. Now the one today we are discussing is abstract resources, mainly influence and how it can help us win the game. There are many things we can do with influence and first and foremost to check out what influence you have is to just go up here to this little person marker with the two circles above his head and that will show you what you're currently gaining your production where you're producing it from and how much you have you can have a maximum of 1000 stored influence so once you get to that you need to start spending it mainly before that if you can so how do we gain influence well you gain three influence per month for every empire unless you have a edict or a trait that allows you higher than that you gain it also from factions so if you have several factions within your empire you will gain increase or decreasing uh, events in the influence and also if you have things like event rewards or the humiliate war goal if you watch the previous episode you'll see about the war goal and you can set your influence gain on that based on that there are a lot of modifiers and stuff like that within the game but you, you come across them as you play them um so yeah so what can we do with influence you know what what, what is there to to you know why is it such an important thing to have well we can make claims which i've shown briefly in the combat phase which will be here so we can claim any planet or any sector, sorry. Not just a planet, a sector. So we can make claims on this entire front here. What that does is if we go to war, we can set ourselves that as our aim. Bear in mind, you can make a number of claims. So the stronger the claim, obviously the better you're gonna have of trying to get it. But the more cost it causes you. Okay, so. What we're going to do now is we're going to set these four here as our claim. It's going to cost us 550 influence, which is about half of what we've got. So we've now made a claim. Now, obviously, we're currently paused at the moment, so we'll see what that affects us when we unpause. So, realistically, it does absolutely nothing, as far as we can see. Okay, so we've made our four claims. What now? You know, influence, we've just burnt through half of our influence. What can we do? Well, we can go to war and we can try and take them four claims. If they lose and we win, then they will lose four sectors. If we have hold of four sectors, and sometimes when you claim peace, you keep the sectors. Uh, you'll see that when you actually go to war. And I will do a run through at the end if we have time to see that. Uh, however, at the moment, we are currently... Uh, at peace, we're at forced peace with these because they've uh, tried to attack us. So we've got a white peace, that's what they say. So they can come 
in and out of us there's no changes nothing like that so what else can we do with influence we can activate decisions and edicts which are here so this here is things that will help us along the lines now there are several things you can do here I have gone over this in a previous episode, but as we're looking at influence as a whole, we'll, we'll look more into it. So we can form some cities. This is uh, an aggressive economy, economic uh, for positive and impacts on food production. So you gain 20% monthly food for 13 years. Pretty decent if you're struggling on your food. Political thought. So you get your ethics shift by 50%. You get Map the Stars, which is surveying on Homo Lake Discovery. Land of Opportunity, which increases your population growth from immigration, as you can see there. And Diplomatic Grants, Trade Attractiveness and Trust Growth. Them things are actually quite useful uh, in their own right. That, it, that will all depend on your kind of play style, your gameplay that you're running and what you need. If you're struggling on food, I mean, we are actually quite, you know, we're quite low there. So we can, you know, we can wipe that on and our food will increase. And we can, if we get too much food, which we do have, we can sell that food and offset our credit loss. So again, it's useful to note that, especially if you've got a lot of influence that you can't get rid of. What else can we do? We can construct the star bases with it, as we already know. The more influence we have, the more star bases we can build, the more area we hold it. Again, like I mentioned earlier, make sure you don't expand too fast. We can maintain diplomatic packs. So sometimes it's an influence cost to make diplomatic packs with, with certain enemies. So we got to keep them upheld by using influence. This is very crucial if you want to stay out of war with certain factions. You can basically bribe them and get them on your side last thing you want to do is face a war on three sides or more because you're not going to be able to hold them all off especially if they decide to align themselves with the factions that are attacking you bear that in mind you can integrate subjects into your empire so you can increase your population you can take different different population into your uh, empire and you can expand from that so basically your immigration pull and stuff like that you can influence elections Elections will determine who your leader is and what the leader's kind of job role is. So you have uh, elections every so often. This is if you're obviously using an election and you have things like this. So you can see you got your Galactic League, your Alien Rights Movement, your Independence, your Human Future Vanguards. All these things have an impact and they also show you how much faction support they have and you can see things like this so if you increase that that's what you get six months worth of unity as you can see here it shows you the candidate support currently he is winning it'll also tell you what he expects so he wants us to create four new orbital research stations and we get the unity unity is useful as i will go on to in a short moment 68 months until our next election Reforming the government. So when you come to reform your government, which we are not currently looking to reform our government, you can, you have to use influence to reform the government and you gain an extra civic. At the moment, we can't do that. We can drop our current thing if we want to. And we can add an extra one. Mining guilds or whatever, but that'll cost us. So what use is this for us? Well, there's certain things that we can see here that are useful. Things like living standards, under which all populations have moderate uh, consumer goods upkeep, regardless of strata. Things like that may help your government. There may be something that will election influence cost. There are certain things that you may need producing extra unity. Population happiness, if you're struggling with your happiness. Building costs and upkeep for all buildings and districts by 10%. These things here can all help you depending on how your game is playing out. So don't don't pass off on them too much. You will gain an extra civic point every so often. Uh, not entirely sure when that is, but you do gain one. So you can 
add an extra one on at some stage. It'll still cost you the 250 influence, which you need. So that is what influence is used for, and ultimately that is what's going to win you the day. If you claim more systems and you take over the planets, and you take over the systems, then you are ultimately going to expand yours and win, hopefully. But hopefully, that is. If you can't, try a different tactic. Now, what use is Unity? Unity allows you to adopt traditions and allows you to activate ambition edicts. Which we do not have. Ooh, proof energy. We can't take that one just yet. But when we can, we will take that one. I didn't see that one. I didn't scroll down all the way. So, we'll make sure we take that one. Adopting traditions is great use for us. It allows us to, there we go, have this. Depending on your game, you will decide which way you want to do it. I'm not going to tell you how to do it. But you also get ascension perks, which allow you certain things like that. Allows you to have rare technologies appear at 1.5 times the normal rate. This is useful because rare technologies are obviously a lot more powerful than your standard technologies. There are certain other ascension perks that you can have lords there absolutely lords which you will gain as you go along so unity is useful that's what you need now you get one unity per month you can stockpile it up to two million so you don't have to take a tradition straight away it will continue to stockpile it until you wish to spend it and you can increase it you can increase it by fulfilling your ruler mandates which we've covered event rewards which is your missions that you get ruler and specialist jobs you can increase your unity from by building planet uh, plant side um, buildings that increase your unity. Planetary unification technology also adds plus two to your monthly increase. Marketplace of ideas policy adds 0.15 per trade value. So if you've got a lot of trade, then you can use the marketplace of ideas policy. Deep space black sites also create one unity. There are many, many things that you will get as you go through. Phonetic purifiers, the civic, they also add two for every purge population. So if you want to start purging pops, then you get unity. Mega art installations also give you 100 per level. So there are plenty of things you can do to gain more unity, and unity will give you a little extra within the terms of traditions. So that covers the two main abstract resources, influence and unity. The next one we have is engineering, physics and society. So the final abstract resource I want to talk about is the research resources. Now, same as Unity, they will continue to uh, increase and they don't stop when you stop researching. They will continue and then add to the research that you choose. There are several ways you can increase it. Event rewards, as usual, give you more research. Ruler and specialist jobs also give you research. And celestial body deposits, such as the ones you put your mining ships on, uh, mining stations, sorry, not mining ships, they will increase your research. Why is research important? Well, it should speak for itself, really. Without research and technology, you have no chance of winning the game because the enemy will just defeat you with high, uh, more firepower, better ships, etc., etc. Not only that, but it increases things like your war exhaustion gain. So it decreases in this case. It also decreases the cost it, it does to have claims, like we've just seen. There are things like new weaponries. There are things like new governments. There are There is a lot of things that you can research. And as you play through your game, you will get a feel for what you want to do. Using the guides and the tactics that we've discussed in combat and such and so forth, you should have a good idea on what you want to do for research. And it is entirely up to you how you do it. Just know that the better the research you have, the more chance you have of winning. As mentioned, get all the minor stations out there. But at the start of the game, as earlier mentioned, try to avoid doing this because this is just excess money used straight away when you can be building things on uh, energy credits and on mi minerals, which are the more important ones to start off with. That is, that is the three abstract resources, and all three of them together should give you a good chance of defeating an enemy. There are strategic resources which I want to cover just very quickly because they all pretty much do their own little thing, but they all 
do something along the lines of improving your systems. So, what do we have? Well, if we go to here, there are the ones that we have currently. Volatile moats, exotic gases, rare crystals, living metals, it's raw, dark matter, and nanites. And we have none of them. There are a lot of different kind of deposits around. And at first, you won't have any idea what they're for. You'll be like, oh, why is this coming up? And why can't I do anything with it? Because they are later game things. They are as you start going into the mid game, where you get the research to be able to mine them and to use them. You will get the opportunity to mine them earlier on, but you can't do anything with them other than doing your boosts through the edicts. Fuel, so you increase your speed, shield hit points, weapon damage, etc, etc. Have a look through them, see which ones you want to use, and you can aim for getting the certain ones you want to use. All them things are useful for you. Now, there are also certain... Uh, certain things you need to actually build with them so such as draw is psionic Psy shield components so when you get them you have to use draw to build them volatile morts again as mentioned the edicts will be covered by them and you also get advanced kinetic weapons and they can also improve your building cost and maintenance as well you can use them to build higher level factories and such and so forth, same as exotic gases. Uh, they can also be worked with plasma weapons and advanced shields. And you can have terraforming with exotic gases as well. The rare crystals, laser weapons, advanced hulls, again edicts and building a maintenance cost. Dark matter, dark matter is a great thing to use for your reactors and deflectors and thrusters so they have a lot of work towards the higher level ships. Living metal is the mega construct edict. And with the help of the living metal, you can build the big ass mega structures, which are very useful for increasing population, etc. etc. Nanites, nanites repair system, and the nanites transmuter building upkeep. So, again, you can decrease your building upkeep. So, that is what they do. And obviously, you need to research exotic gas extraction, rare crystal mining, more stabilization, etc., etc. And then you can gain the deposits and use them for what you need. As mentioned, you will know about them earlier on, and that may determine where you expand your fleet. So, for us, we already have a volatile mort in our system. But if that wasn't in our system, or if there was something in another system, we could push on to it and expand. Get them while you can, use them for what they're used for, and increase your chances of survival and your chances of defeating the enemy. So with the advanced resources and our influence, you have a good chance of winning the game. That's all I'm going to cover in this episode because I think there's a lot that's been covered there to do with resources, a lot to take in, there's a lot more advanced things to think about when you're going through your game. The great thing about Stellaris is, is it's not always just about combat, there's things about planning your expansion and things about you know using all these things to your advantage. Take a moment, pause the game, like I have. I've had the game pause completely since during this conversation while we've been looking at things. You have access to look at everything while you're doing it. The only thing that won't happen is it won't progress. Sometimes it's good to see what you want to do before you progress and then move on from there. Hopefully this has covered the basics of our resources in a bit more detail than what we've covered in the past. If there are any questions or anything like that, make sure you do leave them below. I will always try and get back to you and if I can't explain it in a comment, I will create another video covering anything else you may be struggling on. If there are other things you'd like to learn and know about in Stellaris, or if there's anything you want me to try and cover for your own expansion games, then please let me know, again, below in the comments section. Make sure you hit that thumbs up if you have enjoyed it, and if you haven't already done so, and if you're enjoying these guys, please hit that subscribe button to let me know you are doing, and I will try and get out more to you. Until next time, everybody, take care for now, and I'll see you all on the next one. Bye-bye.